Hi, I'm Conor Houghton. Uh, this is lecture seven in the uh, com common terms and probability section of our unit, Mathematics, Computer Science A. Uh, today I'll be talking about Bayes' theorem. So, uh, Bayes' theorem. Before going on to Bayes' theorem, I just want to remind us of a few uh, bits and pieces we've burnt already in uh, probability. So, uh, first of all, uh, we saw the definition of the conditional probability, uh, the probability of A given B is the probability of A and B, that is the intersection of the two events, divided by uh, the probability B. Um, if we write this in the other, other way around, so P of A and B is equal to P of A uh, given B by P of B, that's sometimes called the multiplicative law. Uh, separately, uh, we have uh, a law that's called the additive law. I only mentioned this in, in passing, uh, we're not going to use the additive law today, but the additive law basically says that the probability of A or B is equal to the probability of A uh, plus the probability of B minus the probability of A um, and B. And you can see why that would be. Basically, uh, if those are the two sets, if that's A and B, and this set there is A, a intersection B, well then A union B uh, is this and that, uh, we don't want to count the little bit in the intersection twice, but if we just took uh, the probability of A and the probability of B, you can think of the probability as a measure of the area of these sets. Well, the, the area of A plus the area of B double counts the intersection, so we need to take that away. So that's the multiplicative law, that's the additive law. Um, in passing, we should say that uh, if we use uh, A bar to be the complement of A, so that's uh, the whole of the, um, the, whole of the, the sample space minus A, a set minus is often written as this backslash like this. Well, from the uh, multiplicative law, it follows that um, uh, P of A union A complement, well, on the one side, that's just P of X, which by definition is equal to one, uh, and the other side is equal to P of A uh, plus P of A complement, and by definition, uh, A and A complement don't have an intersection. One is everything that's not in the other, and so that tells us that uh, P of A is equal to 1 minus uh, P of its complement, like so. That's uh, just to remind us of a few things and also to maybe formalize uh, ideas that um, followed from what we talked about before uh, as the multiplicative and the additive law. What we want to talk about today is the Bayes theorem, and it works something like this. We just saw that um, P of A intersection B is equal to uh, P of A given B multiplied by P of B, uh, but you know, A intersection B, that's uh, symmetric. There's nothing that says that the A has to come first. So it's also equal to P of B given A multiplied by the P of A. And so that tells us that the P of B given A is equal to the P of A given B over the P of B divided by uh, P of A. And that thing uh, is Bayes' theorem, or at least a variant of it. Uh, and it, it is actually um, very useful, very important, because what it allows us to do is it allows us uh, to uh, switch around uh, the order of the, um, of the conditionality. So here, this is A conditional on B. Uh, here, this is B conditional on A. And it's quite frequent that what we're trying to do is, is work out one of those from the other. Uh, in a subsequent lecture, we'll look at Naive Bayes, a um, fairly straightforward machine learning technique uh, that tries to do that. And, and uses uh, the Bayes theorem and then some assumptions about what's called conditional independence. Um, but often uh, machine learning systems, deep learning, etc., can be phrased as a way, uh, as, as an attempt to learn well, one conditionality having evidence uh, about the other. For now, we'll uh, look at a, a standard example or standard type of example, which, which are uh, testing problems. So testing problems uh, are both important, uh, but they're also uh, useful as a sort of paradigm for the sort of uh, thing that Bayes' theorem does and um, an example of, of, of time when you want to, to switch around uh, the conditionality. But rest assured that uh, the usefulness of Bayes' theorem isn't restricted to these testing problems. There are manifold different examples where you want to be able to switch around uh, the, uh, the uh, conditionality. Like I say, much of machine learning really is about that. So a few years ago, um, some uh, a research team um, from Ireland uh, bought uh, lots of examples of, of beef and found that in, in a surprising number of cases, 
uh, these alleged beef steaks were, were actually horse. And this was very shocking. Now, then let's just talk about, um, about an experiment of that sort. So, as I said, this is a test example. These days you could come up with examples around COVID or whatever uh, to make it work and we'd have to have quite a high false positive rate, which isn't true of COVID tests. So I don't want to be misleading. And we'll just talk about this sort of more toy example. So the idea is that uh, some, some steak is actually, um, is, is actually horse in, instead, of, instead of beef. So let's say it's called H the event that a tested stake uh, is, is actually horse. And for the sake of argument, we'll say that the probability of a piece of stake being horse uh, is 0 0.05. Uh, it's not desirable to be horse, because if it is horse, it's coming to the food chain in some complicated way, um, which means that it hasn't been subjected to food, food uh, safety regulations, etc. So this is a bad thing. And here, uh, I don't know if this is an accurate figure, but for the sake of this example, we'll say that uh, one in 20 uh, alleged beef steaks is actually a horse steak, and then let's why uh, represent the um, the uh, the event of a given steak uh, testing positive uh, for for being horse. And so we're interested in two figures. We're interested in what's the probability that uh, if you have a, a piece of horse meat and you test it for horse horsiness, uh, it, it actually comes up positive as it should. And for the sake of argument, let's say that's zero point nine. So 90% of the time, if you test uh, a horse steak for horsiness, uh, you'll be told it is indeed a uh, horse. But unfortunately, there's also a, a false positive rate. So now we're asking what happens if you test um, a piece of not horse uh, for horsiness. So now we're testing a genuine uh, beef steak and asking, is this, uh, is this actually a horse? And we're imagining that the false positive rate is zero, 0 0.1. As I said, that's actually quite a uh, this would be quite a bad test. That's quite a high false positive uh, rate, but it serves for these illustrative purposes. So here we have uh, we have some uh, idea of the instance of horsiness in the stake population, uh, and we have the um, two figures for what happens when you do the test. But what we might be interested, in fact, is if you test a piece of meat, and it turns out that it's uh, that it tests positive for horsiness, we're interested in whether it's actually horse. So these are the um, these are the figures that science gives us. They do multiple tests on known horse meat and known not horse meat, and they find out uh, the probability of the horsiness test being positive in each of the cases. So these are the sort of natural measurements you'd make when developing the test. But what, uh, as a consumer, you're interested in is if a piece of meat tests positive for horsiness, how likely is it to be horse? So you can imagine with disease, if you test positive for a disease, how likely are you to have a disease, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, this is uh, an example of a, of a very broad problem. Now, Bayes' theorem tells us that this is equal to uh, P of H um, uh, of H. Uh, sorry, this is equal to P of Y given H uh, by uh, the P of H, all divided by the P of Y. Okay, so uh, in order to work out the probability that you have horse, given you've tested positive for horse, or beef is tested, steak is tested positive for horse, you need uh, the basis theorem can work that out for you, given that you know the probability of um, of a positive test given horse, multiply the probability of horse, the instance in the population, divided by the probability of testing y. So these two figures uh, we already have, uh, that, that, that's easy. So p of y given h, I've told you 0 0.9, uh, p of h, I've told you 0 0.05. Uh, this, uh, this is more complicated. So this is the probability um, uh, of uh, that you have a um, that you test positive. Well, that's going to be, um, logically, the pos possibility that you test positive if you have horse, multiplied by the probability that you have horse, plus the probability um, that you test positive given that you don't have horse, multiplied by the probability of not horse. Okay, so um, this thing at the bottom, it's often the problematic term to work out, and certainly in machine learning uh, situations, a lot of the trouble is often working out this PY. Here we can do it, because the probability of a positive test is the probability of a positive test uh, when you're testing on horse meat, multiplied by the probability that you have horse meat, plus the prob probability of a positive test on not horse meat, given that you have not horse meat. And these are all things we know. So P of Y given H is 0 0.9, probability of horse meat is 0 0.05, plus the probability of Y given not horse is 0 0.1, multiplied by the probability of not horse, which is 0 0.95. And so you can see what's happening here in that uh, this term uh, is 
quite large relative to this term, even though this is the sort of the mistake term. The mistake is contributing a lot uh, to the calculation. And so if you uh, work all of that out uh, with a calculator, it turns out to be uh, 0.14. So where are we? We're trying to work out the probability of force, given that you have a positive test. And that's, uh, we've decided, is equal to the probability of a positive test given horse, probability of horse, divided by this normalization factor, the probability of a positive test. So this all only depends on, on what happens with the horse, but this uh, uh, depends not only on what happens with when you have uh, horse meat, but it also depends on what happens when you don't. So on the top here, we've got 0 0.9 multiplied by 0 0.05. On the bottom here, we have 0 0.14. And so if you work all of that out, uh, you end up with um, uh, 0 0.14. In other words, the probability that you have horse given a positive test is actually 0 0.32. So somewhat surprisingly, although the, the, the test uh, produces a, a, posit a positive result 90% of the time when you have horse meat and only 0.1 of the time or 10% of the time when you don't have horse meat, if you have a piece of meat that tested positive for horseiness, uh, it's actually more likely to be uh, beef than, than, than horse. And that's um, a, a sort of a sort of the sort of result you often get uh, with testing. If the prevalence in the population is low, then even a small positive rate means that um, when you get a positive, it's more likely to be uh, a false positive uh, than a positive. First point. Uh, the second point, as I said, um, these calculations are are, are very common, uh, very commonly uh, asked as examples, uh, uh, but they are. Um, most important because they illustrate this this idea that often the thing that you have um, is the uh, wrong the conditioning in the wrong way the image given the label when you want the label given the image for example in the classification problem and so often what you're trying to do it's some version of the basis theorem but often it's a version of basis theorem as we'll see even in the example of naive bays in the next lecture when you don't have full ac uh, access uh, to these probabilities so I just wanted to uh, finish off by so, sort of talking a little bit about uh, 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 the way that people talk about Bayes' theorem. So this is Bayes' theorem again. A given B is equal to probability of B given A by the probability of A divided by the probability of B. So uh, when we, uh, I, I mentioned this in the very first lecture, when we talk about probability, we often think about probability as modeling things that are are intrinsically random, about which we can't have any improved uh, knowledge beyond saying that they are modeled by this set of probabilities. But uh, th that, uh, that's the way we come to probability. But what we find, particularly in the applications that probability theory finds in computer science around machine learning, uh, inference, etc., is that what we want probabilities to do is to model our knowledge uh, of something. So uh, there is, there is um, some ground truth, we have some evidence for the ground truth and we want to estimate, uh, we want to model the, um, the probability of the ground truth given the evidence, for example, clearly a sort of Bayesian problem. Uh, and, and in those terms, we often think of the Bayes theorem as modeling the, the process of updating. So, uh, you know, you make a measurement uh, of, of something, uh, you make a measurement uh, of, of the weather, so you measure the temperature, and the, and, the, and the pressure, etc. And from that, you come up with a distribution for the probability of what the weather will be like tomorrow. So that's, that's you, you, the, the weather is going to be one thing or the other tomorrow. That's already kind of determined by, by physics, etc. But our knowledge of it can only be modeled by a probability distribution. Now, maybe later in the day, we, we gather more evidence. So we gather wind directions and so on. We have updates on our temperature measurements and so on. At that point, we can update uh, our, um, our probabilities. So our probability distribution for what we believe is going to happen tomorrow with the weather uh, can be changed. And that act of updating, uh, we can describe as being modeled by, by Bayes' theorem. So in those terms, a P of A is called the prior. So this is supposed to model uh, our knowledge uh, of what's going to happen, of the event A uh, at the moment. So at the moment, we can say event A happens with probability P of A, and event not A would happen with probability 1 mi minus P of A. That's our prior knowledge before we add more evidence. Uh, and so the evidence uh, is, well, the probability of our... Sorry, that should be a P of B at the bottom. Uh, B is, is our evidence. So P of A is our prior. It's a model of um, 
our knowledge of whether or not A is going to happen. P of B, well, we've, now we've gathered the evidence B. So B, in the case of the weather example, would be our measurements of the, the wind speeds or temperatures or whatever. And we can ask, um, how, how, how probable is the evidence we saw? So without taking into account our prediction A or anything else, just over time, how often do we see uh, CB? And so we call this the, the evidence. And then finally, this thing here, the probability of B given A, we can ask how likely uh, are we to see uh, the evidence B given, uh, our, uh, given that A happened? And so that's called the likelihood. So we've gathered more evidence, the evidence is calling B, and we're saying that that evidence is, uh, we're evaluating how likely that evidence is, given our belief that A is going to happen. And so now we can combine all of these things according to Bayes' rule, and afterwards we have an updated uh, estimate of the probability that A will happen. So this is a prob our, our prior probability before we gathered more evidence. This is a model of the evidence. This is the model of the likelihood, how likely is the evidence given uh, if, if A uh, is true. And afterwards, we now have a new probability uh, for A, which we call the posterior. And so uh, people often think of Bayes' theorem as telling us that the posterior, the evidence afterwards, or the uh, belief afterwards, is equal to the likelihood of the evidence by the prior belief divided by, um, by the, the uh, probabilistic model of the evidence, which, as I said, can, is, can often be the hardest thing to do. So, um, so Bayes' theorem performs a sort of number of roles. It's a, it's a fairly straightforward piece of mathematics. It follows, we just we saw, one-line proof from the definition of the conditional probability. Uh, it's very useful in a broad class of calculations where we're trying to change the order uh, of a conditionality. And it's also... Um, sort of held as a sort of totem for an approach uh, to probability theory, which is probability theory is a modeling of, of belief. What's our belief that A is happen, will happen? I believe that there's a 30% chance it will rain tomorrow, I might say. So that's uh, my statement of my belief about, about the weather tomorrow. And Bayes' theorem then can be thought of uh, as a rule that allows us to 